Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. I got a question. All right. Have you ever gotten a speeding ticket since you were a cop? <laughs> since I was a cop? Yeah. No. 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 Okay. So you just... You... Before I was a cop? Yeah. A load of them. Okay. Well, on today's show, magic words to stop speeding tickets in their tracks. It's next. Hi there, I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ryan. Welcome to another episode of Men Are So Smart, and we are givers. Oh, yeah. Just giving and giving and giving and giving. I don't mind taking every once in a while. Well, you know what? Let's take a look at this. These are magic words to stop speeding tickets in their tracks. I can remember one of my very first speeding tickets. I think I told you the story. I was with a girl. We had rented a cabin for the weekend. I was kind of in a hurry to get there, if you know what I'm saying. Oh yeah, yeah And yeah, I yeah. passed up a truck, only to find that my exit was just to the right of the truck. Oh. And a CHP saw it and pulled me over. I pulled to the side of the road, rolled the window down, and as he walked up, he said to me, you have any idea how fast you were going? And I said, uh, no officer, the way I see it, that's your job. <laughs> that's a good way not to get a ticket. I got a ticket, mm. can you believe it? Yeah, that's a good wow. way to get a ticket. Well, here's what to do when you get pulled over. First, wave hello. Let, let's back up the car just a little bit. So let's say you were driving down the road a little faster than you should have been, and you spot a police cruiser lurking behind some shrubbery. <laughs> One former, you have to be old to get that. Mix. One former police officer says the smartest thing you can do right then is to wave at the officer. Why? He will either think that you guys know one another and wave back, or he'll think that you're acknowledging that you were driving too fast and are letting him know that you're slowing down. Either way, you drastically reduce your chance of getting a ticket when you first wave hello. What do you speak out on that, Officer Ron? Uh, you know what? It will set you back just a little bit. It'll make you think, and maybe you'll walk up to the car with a slightly different attitude. I mean, it can't hurt. Mm. Uh, obviously, if you stick both hands out the window and wave, <laughs> they're going to like that even better. Yeah, because you have no gun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that can't hurt either. But I'm not sure that's 100% foolproof. Um, it's better than nothing, though. All right, so All you, right. Uh, as the police officer of our duo, I'm just, I'm Batman. Right. <laughs> you're, you're commissioner, no, you're police chief. Gordon. Gordon. Yes. All right, well, what's number two? Okay, next up, don't say I'm sorry I was speeding. Oh, that reminds me of something, okay. Yeah, I, from having been on both sides of this, yeah, never admit that you were speeding. Mm -hmm. uh, if you did get pulled over, never acknowledge you were in fact speeding, you don't want to give the police any ammunition to use against you, should you contest your ticket in traffic court. When the officer tells you that you're speeding, give a brief, non-committal response like, I see, or I thought I was going with the flow of traffic. Uh, that's probably the best way to go. Uh, what's the problem, officer, is not gonna help your cause. I think that's your job, isn't it, officer? Yeah, now not here's, gonna help. here's the other thing, yeah. is that I would venture to guess that 100% of police agencies now, even the smallest, most podunk, county and city they all have if not body cams they have a video or an audio recording device microphone a microphone they're wearing a microphone and so when they talk to you if you say do you have any idea how fast you were going and you say yeah I'm pretty sure I was going about 10 miles an hour over the speed limit uh, when you go to court guess what they're gonna play yeah they're gonna play that audio recording. Pretty convincing. <laughs> and so again, um, yeah, I, I would never admit to speeding. Just a, hey, if you get a ticket, suck it up. Uh, if you don't agree with it, you don't fight it on the side of the road. You fight, you take it to court. I once was coming back from a ski trip with my first wife and her roommate. And as we were coming down the hill, the car was going a little too fast, granted. The girl was driving, not me. And she got pulled over. And um, the cop was very nice, and uh, ultimately she got her ticket for speeding. And he handed it to her, and she goes, thank you, officer, thank you very much. Because he's out there saving lives. Yeah, okay, Ron, <laughs> sure. Next up, how's your day going? 
ask that question. According to one officer, treating a police officer like a human is a good way to get him or her to treat you the same way. A lot of the time when people make small talk and have somewhat of a conversation, it humanizes the people we're dealing with and it makes it harder for us to give someone a ticket. Secret sources who have dodged more than one speeding ticket in their lives also advise that you just get through the meeting with the police as quickly and politely as you possibly can. You don't want them to remember anything about you except that you were nice yep. and did what you were asked or yep. told. Yep. Mm. Uh, and I'll tell you this, that whenever we write a ticket, we put little notes on the back of the ticket in case it does go to court to remind us of this oh. encounter. So if somebody does say that, I might even write that on the notes where they asked, hey, how's it going today? Uh, just so that they, when we get to court, click, and I remember it a little bit more vividly. Uh, this next one is huge. Okay. Uh, asking, is it okay if I get my wallet out? Uh, so typically as police officers, uh, and I'll tell you this, that vehicle stops are so dynamic. Every We're watching every movement and twitch going on inside that car as we're walking up. And when we get there, I don't want to see his hands down at the sides of his seat. You want to see him on the steering wheel. I prefer him right on the steering wheel yeah. or if you're a passenger up on the dash. Mm -hmm. uh, and then let's say that you, like 99% of other Americans, keep your registration and insurance information in the glove box. In the glove box. Right. Hey, just a heads up, I'm going to be, my registration is in my glove box. Thank you very much. And I can step back and I can, as you open it, I can look inside. And trust me, I will have my hand on my gun when yeah, you do that. Yeah, I just going to ask you that. Um, and then if I see it, it's totally innocuous, moving on. Same thing for your wallet. A lot of bad guys carry their gun in the small of their back. Right. Reaching for their Wallet mm -hmm. can look exactly like reaching, reaching for, for a gun. gun. Yeah. So just it is. It's always a good idea, and uh, if you give a, a lot of heads up, then you're in good shape. This next one, Ronnie, um, I want your feeling and your take on this. In many cases, a warning counts towards a department's ticket quota. Be polite. Don't admit guilt. And you may be able to walk away with the slap on the wrist if you ask, would you consider giving me a warning? Okay, so first off, let me just make this 100% clear. There are no quotas for tickets. Okay. I always tell people, people, when you're writing them a ticket, go, oh, well, I hope this gets you to your quota. And I always told them, oh, there's no quota. I'm allowed to just write as many as I want. So, yeah. Uh, there are... Um, performance objectives and those basically come out to one ticket per shift so which is oh my god easy and they don't care what it's for it could be an equipment violation like vehicle registration seat belt turn any, signal turn signal anything falls under that and most of those are all fix it tickets so they really don't impact you they don't go on your permanent driving record their equipment violations in California, they cost $25 to go get it signed off, and you're, you're done. So um, in that case, and sometimes when you're pulling somebody over for speeding and they have a secondary minor, you know, equipment violation, you can say, look, I'm going to cut you some slack on the speeding. I'm just going to write you a fix-it ticket for your tinted windows or whatever else the case may be and then send them on their way and they feel a little bit better about themselves and you really but again i'm still getting my my one ticket performance objective for the day all right there it is that's the honest to god truth right there yep. where else are you going to hear that on youtube okay oh <laughs> uh, this one oh and this i i had this several times the funniest one i'll tell you so uh when you get approached by a police officer first thing you do not want to say is do you know who I am? No, you want to say, do you not know who I am? Yeah. Uh, same goes for uh, stock bursts of outrage like, my taxes pay your salary. Yeah. And don't you have anything better to do? Yeah. So one of my training officers said, when somebody says my taxes pay your salary, hand them a dime. 
because that's about what they contribute over the course of the year to your salary. Wow. Yeah. So that doesn't help. The best one I had, I was writing a guy a ticket and he asked me, oh, he told me that he was uh, an associate of the attorney general. And so, hey, that's that's pretty good. And we're in we're in the capital of California. And so the attorney general spends a lot of time in Sacramento. I get it. So it's very possible. But then the person said, oh, yeah, he and I go way back. Well, at the time. Kamala Harris. Oh, yeah. Who was our attorney general, who's a female. Right. So he did not go way back with him, our attorney general, who was female. And so when I went up there and had handed his completed ticket to him, I told him, by the way, the attorney general is a female. And he said nothing and <laughs> put his seatbelt on and drove away. Good. Yeah. Good. All right. Next up, make sure your car says, I'm law abiding. What do you mean? Well, I'll tell you. Most officers decide whether you're getting a ticket or a warning before they even approach your vehicle. A good rule of thumb is to keep your car maintained in such a way that you wouldn't be embarrassed to drive it to, say, a job interview. There's your rule right there. Keep it clean, decluttered, and free of bumper stickers that are anti-police or pro-violence. Forgo aftermarket add-ons like spoilers, tinted windows, and neon undercarriage lights. You want to say, I'm responsible and law-abiding, not... I hate the popo, I speed all the time, and I'm trying to hide something from you. Yeah, and you can tell right away when you look inside a car and it looks like they're living in there, that is a person that, yeah, is probably going to get a ticket. Uh, they're just, I don't know, and, and not only get a ticket, but you're going to run them, make sure they don't have any warrants, and if they're on probation, you're going to pull them out of the car and you're going to search their car. So a lot of a lot of bad things can happen from having a messy car. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this next one, I I like because it's kind of true. Uh, it says I'd like a continuance, Your Honor. So the more time here it says the more time you put between your speeding encounter and your court date, the better. Advise some ticket dodgers. Imagine how many people an officer pulls over in a month. How many of them do you think he'll remember six months from now, yeah. especially? If you take your ticket quietly and move on, the more continuances you can reasonably request, the more time you have to collect your evidence, prepare your defense, and the less specific that officer's recollection of you will be. Getting a continuance also increases the probability that the ticketing officer retires, transfers to another department, or just doesn't show up for your court date. So, Retires, really? <laughs> I, uh, how long was your continuance? Yeah. Uh, 32 years. <laughs> wow. So I will tell you this. I'll, I'll give you a tidbit that if you were to get your ticket, say, in April, mm -hmm. if you can push off your court date until somewhere in the summertime mm -hmm. when the officer's kids might be out of school vacation. and they're on vacation, you stand a little bit better chance of them not showing up for court. Um, honestly, whenever I got a summons to court for a ticket that I wrote, it's like hitting the lottery because it's four hours of overtime. Oh, wow. So when I get those summons, I'm going to court unless I'm on vacation. If I'm in California, I'm going to my damn court date. Yeah. So and it's overtime. It's overtime. Wow. Yeah. Cause it would be if it's on my day off or if it's before or after my shift. Gotcha. So... Yeah. All right. So we're talking today about ways to avoid getting a speeding ticket. And the final one is for those of you who have GPS navigation systems in your car, here's an added bonus. You can download, download additional points of interest, POI, software onto your gizmo, you know, on the internets uh, that will tell you when you're approaching stoplights that are hooked up to traffic cameras. Yep. You'll find the links to the software on the GPS manufacturer's homepage. Uh, check those out. Uh, I use Waze, W-A-Z-E. Mm -hmm. Waze tells you of police activity in front of you as well as uh, red light cameras oh. coming up. So I'm not involved with Waze and by any stretch of the imagination except that I use it and it does give you that information. So. Well, Ronnie, I really appreciate your input on this particular topic. Um, most of us 
are fearful of getting a speeding ticket for sure. They can be really expensive, God knows. Uh, it affects your, my daughter has a couple of them. Uh -huh. She takes a little bit after the old man and she has a couple speeding tickets. And since I was paying her insurance up until she Two got weeks married, ago. yeah, uh, it affected me. Her, yeah. her insurance was expensive. I bet. And now I don't care. Yeah. So, That's your problem. Yep. All right, that'll bring us to the conclusion of another episode of Men Are So Smart. Today, we talked of ways to get out of speeding tickets and things that work and things that don't work. Uh, if you'd like any more information or to contact us, you will find the information below. We do so appreciate you watching the show and yep. would really love it if you would subscribe. Uh, it would be great for us. We, we need those. And, hey, and if you have a great way of getting out of a ticket, put it in the comments. Yeah, we get yeah. back to you almost immediately yeah. when you comment. We'll mention below. it, maybe mention it in the next show. You got it. All right, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ronnie. And we will see you on the next Men Are So Smart. Bye-bye. <laughs>